And to a tough day in the markets, Phantom falling 4.5%, now sitting at 27 cents, Bitcoin tumbling down 2.5%, and I think I found the culprit, but more importantly, how much lower can we go? We're going to identify the key levels in the charts, don't forget to smash up the like button, don't forget to subscribe, as always, if you want to trade any of these moves, check out the links in the description to Bybit or BitGet, both of those are offering some great discounts for you guys, plus some sign-up bonuses. Now, as you can see here, I want to start off by showing you the QQQ, which is the NASDAQ ETF. Now, what you can see on the QQQ is another depressing day, a big fall here uh, on the NASDAQ, now sitting at 299 so under $300 here, uh, 300 on the NASDAQ. But more importantly, what I want to show you is look at the levels we're now back to. We're back to the 27th of July levels. Now, why is this important? You'll remember in July at the last Fed meeting, Jerome Powell came out quite dovish. And it was after that moment that we started to see a rally with risk starting to rotate on. And you saw this rally in the S&P, in the NASDAQ. And this is what we saw. Now, since we've then had our Fed meeting with Jerome Powell now reminding markets that he means business. And now you're seeing markets start to unwind that and say, hang on a second. This was too premature. We need to go back to the levels we were at before. So I would not be surprised if we don't see the Nasdaq even coming down to this kind of 280 range, back into this kind of a range before Jerome Powell gave those dovish remarks. Now we can see that in the Fed rate monitor tool as well. The market is now heavily pricing in 74 base, uh, sorry, 75 basis point rate hike. 74% of the market has priced that in. This was much lower. In fact, over 70% of the market had previously priced in just 50 basis point rate hike when we saw that relief rally in the NASDAQ. Now, why is that important? Well, we know Bitcoin is correlated to the NASDAQ, and then we know all coins are correlated to Bitcoin. So we can see here that Bitcoin is having another difficult day today here, down 2.6%. And yesterday's candle was a bit of a false alarm, right? We saw a nice strong candle yesterday with decent volume, but today's volume was bigger, which is always a telltale sign, right? If the down day has bigger volume then the update, then you really know who's in control. And again, this was a bullish engulfing candle, but it looks like we're trying to get a bearish engulfing candle next to it as well. So this has got a little bit of more work to do, but it's a strong negative candle pushing us to the downside. So very mixed messages here from the markets. But one thing you can see is we are struggling and we can see risk starting to rotate off. The greed index has notched back below. We can see it sitting at 27. That's the euphoria from yesterday when we had a green day on yesterday. When you refresh this tomorrow, because you get this reading updated by the following day, I won't be surprised if this falls down back to that kind of 24 level. Now, if we take a look at the markets, the markets had a crazy day. When I gave you guys the morning update, we saw the pre-market was over a percent up on the NASDAQ. So to finish down one and a half percent is a two and a half percent swing on the NASDAQ. Crazy volatility. You can see here the volatility index. This is called the VIX, which measures your volatility, is up three percent today, showing some crazy volatility in this market. And traders and investors just don't know what to do. One minute they're in risk on, next minute they're risk off, and you're seeing that panic come through into the markets as well. So what does that mean for Phantom, right? Because we're looking here at Phantom, we're down 4.36%. And we now need to say, okay, how much lower can we go? And what are we going to do in this market? Well, you guys know, in terms of my long-term portfolio, I've got a carefully crafted portion of Phantom in my portfolio within the layer one section of my portfolio. I understand it's a low market cap play. I know it can be quite risky at times, but it's something that I'm happy with. I'm happy with my risk to reward there on Phantom as a position. And if I see lower price points, I may nibble a bit more, but let's see what kind of price points I would need to see. So just to remind ourselves of where we're at, we're in this big upward trend. We broke to the down downside, we fall into this channel. Now, remember, when you break to the downside, initially, our first level of support was at 30 cents. Lost that, right? We lost that when Jerome Powell spoke on this big candle here, and we fall into the downside. If I hover over to the four hourly chart, what I want to show you here, and it's the same chart, but what I want to show you here is this is where we tried to hold 30 cents, and then we broke down, right? We broke down, and now we need to look at what our next pivot point Okay, and our next pivot point comes at this level here, and that's at 24 cents. Now, why are we getting a little bit of a hold up in this area? Well, we're getting a little bit of a hold up in this area because that's the Bitcoin 20,000 level. So when Bitcoin continues to fall below 20,000, like we're seeing today, 19,700 at the moment, we will start to see Phantom fall even further. So I've got my eye out for a 24 cent Phantom. I might set myself a nice cheeky limit order to get a little bit more because now we're getting quite deep because my next price target after that is at the bottom of the wedge at about 20 cents, which is not only an important technical level because it's the bottom of the wedge there, but also it's a key psychological level, right? The 20 cents mark is an important point. So definitely something for me to look out for is having a little bit of a nibble around this 24 cent mark if we come down to there and also 20 cents here. That's what I'm looking out for here on Phantom. 
Now, if I bring out the four hourly EMA ribbon, you'll be able to see here, this EMA ribbon is acting as perfect resistance right now. You can see the brief rallies we've had have just got thrown into our EMA ribbon and big moves to the downside, gone into our EMA ribbon and rejected again. So I wouldn't be surprised to see, do we come back down? Do we come test the bottom of this channel here at about that 25 cents mark? Maybe have another relief rally before then falling down to 24. So I don't expect it just to dump all the way now down to 24. Of course, we'll have to keep a wider eye on Bitcoin as well, which we'll do. Let's bring out the VPVR here on the four hourly and you can see volume starts to become thinly contested now. The point of control was up at the 30 cent mark. So now that we're losing that 30 cent mark, we need to be very careful, okay? Because now things become thinner, which means it's even easier for the bears to push us to the downside. So in continued red days here on Bitcoin could uh, consecutively push the price down here on Phantom. Let's also, whilst we're here, take a look at the Bollinger Band as well. And you can see here exactly what's happening, right? Just as the top of the channel coincides with the top of the Bollinger Band and we get rejected to the downside. So don't be surprised if around this region here, around this kind of a region here, don't be surprised to see if you get a bit of a bounce, right? Come into here, maybe get a bit of a bounce, get rejected again from the top of the Bollinger Band, create a lower low, right? So all we're looking out for is you've got a high, you've got a lower high, you keep doing that and you create your downward trend. If you don't know what I'm talking about in terms of lower lows and higher highs, lower highs, what's a trend, what's an uptrend, you've got to check out my free TA course, completely free, links in description, go get yourself set up on Skillshare and be able to watch that course from start to beginning for free, guys. This course would cost you over $1,000 and it's 10 years worth of my experience in traditional finance with technical analysis from professional institutions. So definitely go check that out, guys. I can't believe that it is free, but I've made it free because I don't like selling stuff. So it's for free for you guys. So go check that out. Link is in the description. Okay, so that's what I'm looking out for here on the four hour. Let's now switch that up a little bit to the daily because the daily is where we want to look at things. And what you can see here is we are losing quite badly our Bollinger Band, okay? You can see we're just riding this Bollinger Band to the downside and, and changing the pattern of it, right? Because before it was an upward trend, now you can see the Bollinger Band is really starting to curl over. If you were to extrapolate this line, it looks like it wants to do something like this. If the lower band wants to do something like this, and then that just means Phantom's going to start trying to trade within its Bollinger Band to the downside, okay? So that's something I'm keeping an eye on here on the daily chart. If I bring out the VPR on the daily chart as well, and you'll see that we do have a little bit of support on the daily coming in around that level as well. So we do want to see, can we get that support here around the 24 cents? You can see how the point of control from the VPR sits at exactly our horizontal support. I just said to you 24 cents by looking at this pivot point here, right? And that ties in with the, uh, with the volume profile as well, which is really, really important. When you get multiple indicators telling you that certain levels are important, that's called confluence. That gives you extra confidence that what you're looking at could actually materialize. So the more indicators or the more signs you can get that marry up and different time frames that marry up, that really does help your case in terms of identifying key levels and support and resistances. Okay, so that's what I'm looking out for. That would be a really nice dip by there at those kind of levels, 24 cents. If we lose 24 cents, I'll be looking at 20 cents. And again, Bitcoin doesn't look like it wants to go anywhere anytime soon, right? If we take a look here at Bitcoin, um, you can see here that we're coming now. Let's just change this chart. We can see here that we're now well and truly coming down to the bottom of this channel. The bottom of this green channel here, which I'm going to have to extend to the right-hand side now, is at 18,700 range, okay? So I'm expecting us to come to that level. I expected this little bit of... Um, consolidation, let's call it, around the level we're at. This is the 20,000 level, right? I said that. I said around the 20,000 level, I expect some psychological support, but the next major support is at 19,200 on Bitcoin, okay? So I'm looking out for 19,200, then 18,700 lose 18 to 7200 sorry if we lose 18700 things could get pretty pretty nasty guys but we're going to save that for when that happens if that happens uh, and then we'll start to look at what are the price targets further beyond there now the only good news we have is here on the daily chart RSI is coming towards that oversold territory so we do have room on the RSI for a bullish move a bit of a relief rally to the upside maybe up towards 22 before being thrown back to the downside that's something that's a possibility I mean if I bring out the EMA on the daily ribbon you can see the same thing right it wouldn't be completely averse like when we fell here we consolidated into our EMA ribbon when we fell here is that the only consolidation we're going to have or can we go into our EMA ribbon or being thrown to the downside. So that's something I'm watching out for here on the daily chart for Bitcoin. Overall, a tricky market right now, a market just to be patient, not to panic, not to move into any crazy positions or any crazy trades, but to sit back, look at your portfolio, understand it holistically and ask yourself, 
What am I short on? Where do I need to add positions to? Where? What am I overweight in that I shouldn't be overweight in? What are those crazy uh, projects that I'm holding, which if we fell to 15,000 on Bitcoin, I'm going to panic sell because you're better off panic selling those now, right? That's the idea. So definitely take this as an opportunity to sweep through your portfolio, go through and say, why am I carrying that? Why am I carrying that? Oh, I need more of that because these are great moments for you to do that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to smash up the like button and subscribe. Now, go ahead and watch my breakdown of Polygon Matic because a lot of people have been saying that the Layer 2 space is going to be over in a couple of weeks because of Ethereum, but I've got a different take. I think the Layer 2 solution space is going to thrive. I think ETH 2.0 is only the merge of the beacon chain, which turns proof of work to proof of stake. And our attention needs to focus now back on these Layer 2 solutions because sharding doesn't come into at least 2023. So a lot of people are, are kind of uh, writing off these Layer 2 solutions. But for me, it's definitely a focus. It's a part of my portfolio. And you need to go watch this breakdown of Polygon Matic right here. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.